the same will be starting. Uh, uh, thank you everyone for coming for like a late HP meeting tonight. We have like a lot of people today. Um, and uh, like really nice and interesting topic. Um, first of all, I just want to uh, give, awards, give a word to um, uh, Colot, who is hosting us today. Starting their like new uh, job engine called Noodle Yard, and Chris will like uh, do like a quick introduction. Thanks, Ale. <clears throat> hey guys, good to see a lot of you again. Awesome. Anybody first time pull up? Pull up tonight? Oh wow, sweet. Okay, well, awesome. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to give a spiel, but I'll be quick. Uh, cool off, you know, we're a membership-based workplace. People come in here, they work, they network. We've got an awesome community, and we love having people like LAPHP or uh, LA MySQL or all of the other groups that come through our doors get together. You get to meet here, um, and then if you come to our workspace, you get to work together. Sometimes people are doing different projects, we have lots of events, things like that. So we love having you come through. We've got conference rooms and mailboxes and things like that to help you if you're a freelancer, make your business grow. And like Oleg said, one of the things that was happening with Coloc was <coughs> so much great talent coming through the doors that a lot of the companies and the startups and the people that we're involved with started calling us saying, hey, how can I get access to this guy or that girl or whatever? And so we created not so much an engine, but a place where you can go and you can look for some of those jobs. Um, or if you're a recruiter or a company, you're looking to post a job, we've got a great place where you can do it. Even if you're a startup, we offer some serious discounts to first year startups, second year startups, get your jobs out there so that we can connect people together. So love all the talent. And to help, um, you know, because you guys all work so hard, we figure that sometimes you want to relax a little bit. So um, tonight I'm going to give away an Apple TV. Um, and just a little bit of involvement from you in order to win this. If you can whip out your Twitter client and just tweet something pretty cool about Noodle Yard. You know, I just looked at Noodle Yard and saw some cool jobs, noodleyard.com or use our, our, uh, our call sign at Noodle Yard, that would be awesome. Or whatever, you know, whatever is sort of creative and hopefully it's positive about Noodle Yard, I appreciate it. And we'll get this away at the end of the night. So thanks guys for coming, love having you here. Yay. Yeah, we'll announce the winners after, uh, uh, we'll announce the winners after the, like, the main presentation, so like you have enough time to tweet. Um, I also want to uh, introduce our uh, other sponsor who like provided wonderful food and drinks tonight. It's uh, Walt Disney Resorts, uh, Parks and Resorts Online, and I have Annie from Walt Disney here tonight. Hi, um, thank you so much for allowing us to be here. Um, we're the um, segment of the entire Walt Disney Company that handles all the travel and vacation offerings online. Um, we currently have over 50 applications that our division alone handles. Um, of course, we're a LAMP stack environment, that's why we're here tonight, um, looking for a lot of great talent. I think we currently have about 45 positions that we're looking to fill. Um, over 40, 30, 40 projects that are going live for us soon, so we are looking to build our team. Um, we have, geographically, we're dispersed between three locations, which is Orlando, Seattle, and also Glendale. Um, I do have my counterparts, Louisa and Mike, and we'd be happy to answer any questions you may have in regards to positions um, or about the company itself. So, thank you. Yay. Well, and with that, I just want to pass the word to like our uh, guests. Uh, we have really international team today, uh, like uh, basically like the main core developers team uh, from uh, Cake PHP. Uh, first of all, we have uh, Larry Masters uh, right here, who's uh, one of the founders. <laughs> He's the guy to blame for. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we have also Graham and Jose. Um, Jose is from Venezuela, and Graham is uh, from. Australia. Australia, yeah, exactly. So uh, we have uh, like a really unique opportunity today. Um, so with that, I just wanted to uh, give words to a presenter. Thanks. Okay, so thanks everyone for coming. Um, it's a huge turnout and uh, bigger than sort of anything we expected. So that's brilliant. Uh, can everyone hear me? Okay, or should I? Sp no. Speak up a bit. Okay. Um, 
So what we're going to do, we've got a couple of things that we want to run through. Uh, there's a bit of a tutorial, a uh, run through, quick run through on how to get an application up and running with Cake PHP. And then we're going to run through some of the changes that we've done in a new version that we're working on for Cake PHP 2.0. So we're going to run through both of those and um, see how we go for time. Um, exactly how much time is it, by the way? An hour and a half. An hour and a half. Okay. Um, <coughs> so has anyone got laptops in front of them? They're going to follow through or no? Okay, so I'm gonna. Okay, there's there's one. Uh, we'll see how we go. Um, Are you gonna post your slides online? Slides will be online. Code will be online as well. Okay, so you can grab all of that. And uh, we actually will have a recording online as well. Okay, so for those that couldn't make it, they they probably watching the live stream that we're doing at the moment. And if you want to catch up on this again, we'll have it on tv.cakephp.org. Uh, that'll be probably next week sometime after a bit of post-processing, got to make me look pretty and so forth. Um, so just a quick mention, we have a conference that happens once every year, uh, the Cake Pear Tree Cake Fest conference. That's happening in the UK this year in Reading. Uh, so more information about that will be available soon. Uh, we're also doing a bit of a tour coming up. Um, we've, we've done a little one this week. We've gone to New York, to Chicago and here. Uh, that's just this week and we're planning on doing something bigger um, Sometime next year, I think. Yeah. Um, so, a bit of a tutorial on Cake PHP. We have this convention over configuration approach to building applications. And what this means is that by using some of our conventions, it's much quicker for you to build applications. Uh, so, I'll run through some of the conventions that we, we adopt, and it's just about things like class names and file names. Uh, keeping in mind that all of these can be changed. These are just, if you use the standards, if you follow the conventions, it's a lot easier and a lot quicker. Uh, so we have models. Models represent data. Uh, class names are singular and the file names are singular. Uh, the reason I'm putting these in slides in, is so that when you go back and look at it later, there's a lot of description for you to, to run through. Um, so views. Views are what's shown to the user, and that may be HTML, it might be JSON, it might be something completely different. It could be a, a file, like a, bi a binary file. Uh, so the file name matches the controller action name, and the action name, an action on a controller, is just a public function on a controller class. Uh, and the path is here, so views slash controller slash action. And you'll see these as we go through and build. The controllers themselves are plural, and they have a plural uh, file name, with controller uh, appended after it. The database, uh, plural again, so for, for storing user information, you might have a users table, plural again. Uh, foreign keys, if you've got a, a post in a blog that, and a post belongs to a user, it would have a user underscore ID in the post table to link those together. Um, so we'll quickly run through this example, and the example that I've got is a simple URL bookmarking service. So uh, this was sort of designed around the downfall of Delicious, or potential downfall, impending downfall, however you want to take it. Uh, so simple URL bookmarking service with some thumbnailing, uh, some, some user authentication, and just a lot of good bits and pieces in there to give you a good rounded view of Cake PHP to build out an application. Uh, so the idea is a user has one or more URLs. Each of those URLs, uh, we're actually going to add ratings to them. So users can come in and add ratings to those URLs. Um, or they could also have tags, so you could associate them with other URLs. And uh, in Cake, there's all sorts of associations. You can have massive chains of model associations, and you can have interconnecting associations as well. So very flexible with how you uh, connect and manage your data. So, slides away, we'll get into designing a database. Is everyone familiar with MySQL? I'm just, yep, there's a question. Is there any way you can make the type larger? Yes, I'm, I'm halfway through. <laughs> um, so, Uh, nope. E echo install. Okay. Uh, so we're going to create a, some u a users table and a URLs table to store that information. Yes, I can. So let me just. Cool. Perfect. Uh, so.
So we're going to create a database to start with, and for simplicity, uh, I'll just call it LA. Is everyone familiar with MySQL? Yes. yes. Uh, so creating a users table, we want to store a username, a password, an email address. So I think that's about all the information we really need to get people logged in. Uh, what we'll also do is store information about when they were created and modified which is just really handy for when the user was created and when they last adjusted their account information. So create table users, and this is plural following the standards, following the conventions. We're going to have an ID, and I'm going to have this as a 36-character string. The reason I do this is I'm actually going to use a UUID to store against the users, and it's just handy if you're merging uh, merging databases, merging information in together. You can also create it as an auto-incrementing integer if you're used to those. Um, as if you set it as an integer, it will do those auto-incrementing for you. Uh, if you set it as a char 36, it'll generate you UIDs. So handles that for you and UIDs is... What do you want? Oh, okay. Yep, right. Sorry, got to do that in two steps. Okay, and... As far as performance goes, is there any difference between... I don't think there be, would be anything um, entirely measurable between the two. Um, I mean, you index on your, prim on your primary uh, key, so you wouldn't get any performance loss um, specifically here, no. Yeah, so we generate the UUIDs from a string class in KPHP Core. That's where they come from. Okay. Is there another qu question? No. Uh, so char 36, uh, not null, and primary key. And we want a username as well. So it's going to be, say, 45 characters. Also not null. The password, eventually we want to hash the password. We, w we don't want to store clear text passwords. Uh, I think it's Gawker is the good example. You don't want to store information in a way that's uh, easily retrievable. So we'll make this a, uh, say, 255 characters and also not null. And we wanted these created and modified fields. So created, and this will be date time, and modified. So we'll also create the... Um, Also create the URLs table. Again, the ID, char 36. And now we want to link URLs to a user. A user is going to create a URL. So we need to create an association or provide for one. So user ID is a field. It's a char 36 because it's going to hold the user's ID. So same. Same data. Now for a URL, we're going to have the URL itself, which we'll just put as text, a name, which will be, um, say, varchar255. We'll say not null. Perhaps a description. And we'll also create the created and modified as well. Just very handy information to hold on to. Okay, so all we've done is create the database. We've got basic information that we want. Later, we're going to do ratings, but at the moment, that's the core of the application. That's proof of concept, user authentication, and user's own URLs. We can manage those. We can change those. And uh, we also want to generate thumbnails as well. But that's the core of the application. We'll uh, go through and uh, build out some code. I'm just going to use that same window. <coughs> OK. 
So uh, Cake comes with this uh, console called Bake, um, appropriate, being Cake. Um, now Bake is designed to generate code for you to make things quicker. So what we're actually going to do now is generate some code for the application based off the database information that we've got. Now uh, Bake is an optional thing. Uh, you can go through and create things yourself, go through and create classes, views, uh, controllers, models, anything you like yourself, or you can get Bake to generate them for you. The other thing you can do as well, and you'll see a little bit later, is you can modify those bake templates as well. So if what cake comes with by standard isn't exactly what you're after, you can take those bake templates, modify them, and have your own code generation tools, or you can start your own from scratch, your own templates from scratch, and again, your own code generation tools. Uh, so the format, if you type cake bake, you'll see an interactive console comes up. Uh, because we haven't provided any more options, it's assuming we want to bake out a project, which is right, but I'm going to provide a, I'll show you a short form. So cake bake project, and we want to call it LA. Uh, it's come up with some questions. Um, is this the right path? And is the skeleton directory correct? And those are the standard. They're coming from the cake PHP core. So those are the templates I'm using at the moment. So I say, yes, that looks OK. We don't want verbose output. And it's done a whole heap of generation for us and got a nice summary. It's generated a cipher seed for, um, for security and security salt for hashing passwords. So that's generated a unique one, which will be unique to your site for that, uh, that code generation. <coughs> um, so if we have a quick look, yeah, I guess. Uh, move that over again. Can you open this one? Okay, so this is the directory that we've baked into. We've got all these folders and all these files. Um, we've got app controller, app helper, and app model at the top. These are application-wide classes that all our classes will eventually extend from. Uh, so this is a point of code injection, almost, where you can provide application-wide settings and functionality. Uh, in models, there's nothing in there. There's behaviors and data sources, uh, subdirectories, but uh, nothing in there at the moment. But it's built out this skeleton for you to add your classes into. Uh, so we've got users, uh, we've got URLs. We want to generate the code for that because we just want to get the web interface up, you know, a web interface, the cake one, standard one for the moment, and uh, see, what, see what that does for us. So cake bake. <laughs> Model all. Model all. Um, so I'll run cake bake all first, and we'll see what it does. Um, is that what I ran last time? Or do you want to use all? Um, so cake bake user all to start with. Um, I'm going to bake all the information I have for the user model. <coughs> and it's come up with an error. I don't have a database configuration. So what it's doing here is interactively taking me through database configuration. I haven't told it where the database is and what the user is, so it's got some defaults that it will run through with. So the, the name of the configuration is default. The driver, and there's plenty of drivers if there, if you don't want to use MySQL. Question. Oh, so, question. Um, so yeah, you can select from any of those drivers. Plus, there's community contributed drivers. And we also have a data sources plugin as well for additional drivers. So we're using MySQL for the moment. Persistent connection, no. Host is local host. We're not going to specify a port. The user I have is dev. The password is also dev, just for local development. The name I've got is la for the database. There's no prefix. We'll just leave the encoding blank for the moment. Uh, bit of a summary, does that look OK? Yes. We don't want any more database configurations for the moment. And it's created the database configuration file for us. So if I go, tr go and try and bake that user information again, <laughs> uh, 
Um, what, you, what you missed there was a whole heap of output that gives you a list of files that were generated. It generates controllers, models, views, tests, and fixtures. Uh, anything else that it generates? Nope. That's pretty much exhaustive. Um, so the tests and fixtures uh, for unit testing, it's a good uh, starting point for your tests. The controller will provide actions for uh, an index, for a list of users, for user addition, editing, deleting. Um, the, uh, the views matching those actions as well. And the model code provides things like validation. Uh, and validation is grabbed from the database, and we'll see that uh, in a moment. So previously, when we looked in models, we didn't have anything. Now we've got a user model. Um, and that's a little bit small, but we'll show that larger in a moment. But it's generated this validation information. It's also got this has many variable down the bottom, which is an association for the URL table. So it's saying a user has many URLs. And it's generated that because we followed the standards. Uh, what happens if we don't follow the standards? So, like if we want to select like a different naming conventions? Yeah, so OK, the question was, what happens if you don't follow the standards? And the answer to that is you build up the model files yourself, and you can uh, define different fields. Uh, you can define these associations yourself. Um, or you can start the Bake Console interactively. And it will ask, do you have any other associations? And it, it will guide you through for adding new associations to your model. So right now it found that it has many because you had like a user ID field uh, that was going to perform key. Yeah. Uh, so it's also generated a user's controller, which has got those actions I talked about, index, view, add, edit, and delete. Um, so what we'll do is we'll browse to that. Site. So this is the, um, I will move that across a bit. Okay. Hey. Do you use uh, foreign keys at all for associations or just name based and convention? Um, just name and convention, but um, you can assign foreign keys as well if you like. It's, n it's not uh, something you specifically don't uh, sp specifically have to not do if that makes sense you can you, you can provide those as well don't necessarily have to do it so that you just right if you follow the naming convention the the cake would kind of recognize it that's right <coughs> uh, so this is the the start page the home page that it generates when you bake a project and it's baked it from a template which you can change but this is the default you want to say something oh. OK, so we have a user's controller that's generated. We want to have a look at that. We want to see what's, what's, what's been made. So the URL convention is to have the controller name first, which is the user's controller, and then the action that you want to go to. And we just want to go to the index to start with. And it's given us this little page, which has been generated. Uh, down the bottom, you'll see queries that are being run. Uh, there's a select user, so selecting all the users and account. Uh, there's a short form for the URLs as well, and these are all configurable again. So just slash users will by, by default go to the index action. Uh, we can see we can add a new user. So the username and password. We didn't add email address. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's hidden, the created and modified essentially. Now these are handled again by default by CakePHP because they're date time, because they're called created and modified it will inject those. It will insert that into the database for you as you create your records. So it's a part of the naming convention? Yeah, again, part of the conventions. If we try and click on list URLs, we get a nasty error because we haven't actually generated the stuff for the URLs yet. So I'll do the same thing in the bake console, except I'll do it for URLs. It's gone through and provided that output to say what it's baked. And if I refresh, you probably want URL instead. Hmm? <laughs> if I refresh, we've got the same sort of information. And again, I can add a URL. You can see I've got certain types of text, uh, certain types of inputs generated for different fields that were in the database. And along with that, you'll see the little red star indicating required fields, matching those that were not null in the database configuration. So if I submit this, I get a nice error message at the top. 
and this is supposed to be not empty, so it's telling me that there. This information is grabbed from the model file where it uh, specifies model. Uh, validation rules. So the name, which I'll. So you can like uh, set up the custom validation rules and uh, right. <coughs> custom messages. That's what it's called. So you can set up, uh, yeah, custom validation rules, custom messages. You can also set up multiple validation rules per field and uh, more complex rules that are run through functions rather than just predefined ones. So here we're saying the rule, this line here, if you can see it, the rule is not empty. And that's a built-in rule in Cake PHP. So we're just using that because it's, it's nice and simple, it's there. But if you had a more complex rule, uh, such as uh, complexity of a password, for example, you might want to go through and check that password, check what characters are in it. You'd run that through a function which checks that and then return a result, true or false. Is there any uh, integration of the front end with the JavaScript so we can do like a validation on um, there is some community contributions for that, um, but nothing in the core for that. Mm. Sorry, I didn't hear the, question. the question was whether there's any uh, integration between the front end and the back for validation. So whether or not there's some JavaScript assistance for validation. Um, but there are community con contributions for that. Uh, need to find my notes. So as it stands, we've got a reasonably functional site. We can, add a, we can add a user. So we'll add Graham. And we can see we've now got a user. We've got a nice message at the top to say it was successful. And we've got all the information we were looking for. We can view that. So a different, a different view is presented for the view for an individual user. Uh, we can create a new URL. Uh, the other thing that's wrong here is it's showing an ID instead of the username. Probably better to show the username in a drop down if you're going to have a drop down of information. Um, later on you could perhaps lock it down to the currently logged in user, but we don't have authentication yet. Uh, so we can add a URL. And we now have a URL uh, associated with that user. We can click through to it, no, through to the user and we can click through to view the URL. So that's all there. I mean, we've built a, a prototype for a system. You could show that to someone and say, essentially, this is what you would do. You've got create users, users own URLs. Um, <clears throat> so what we might do now is, oh, well, before I do this, can someone tell me what's wrong with the users list here? What's wrong with this information? Right, there's a few people saying password, and that's what I was looking for. So clear text passwords, generally not a good idea. So we'll go through and we'll add in authentication. And the authentication component for Cake PHP does a lot of things for you. Um, it handles logging in, logging out, uh, does a lot of nice things like crypting your password for you, that sort of stuff. <clears throat> I'm a nano user, by the way. I get criticized for that, but I'm fine with it. <laughs> OK, so this is our user's controller. But what do, what do I want? Um, all the controllers, and you'll see that in the user's controller, it extends app controller. The app controller is provided as an empty class here just as a point of injection, like I said earlier. So it extends the controller, which comes from Cake PHP. So what I can do here by defining some components that all my controllers will use is that they'll, they'll, all, be def they'll all be used by all controllers. And what I'm going to add in here is the auth component. The auth component comes with Cake. It requires the session component as well. So I'm going to add the session component too. 
I'll just have a quick look to see what effect that's had on the site. So I'll just refresh. And I've got a, a nasty error. Um, good thing about the errors that come with K2 